There's a lot of very smart executives in large traditional businesses. There's a lot of uh, heads of innovation. There's a lot of uh, heads of strategy. There's a lot of kind of heads of business development. People that are very forward looking in nature, they've literally, they're literally in a role to look not just over the short term, but over the medium to long term at a traditional business. And what they see on the horizon is inevitable disruption. They see new business models coming in, new technologies coming in, and they say, hey, we need to try and be in these new areas. And how are we going to get there? Right. Because my core business does not fit these new models. And actually, these new models would probably commoditize part of my core business. But we need to be playing not just where the puck is, but where the puck is going to be. Right. Um, so how do we do that? And it really all starts in the boardroom. And so uh, what we want to talk about is how do you build consensus in the boardroom if you're not in the boardroom by default, right? If you're not on that C-suite executive team, but you are still in a powerful role, you lead teams, you're supposed to be leading that new innovative mid to long-term thinking, um, how do you actually gain consensus from the top down? It's very difficult. And so I would start thinking about it. At, there's two different boardrooms. There's a boardroom for literally the board of directors. And then there is a boardroom, which is amongst the C-suite, right? The CEO and that C-suite executive team. When you want to broach the conversation about a long-term, disruptive, risky, probably expensive uh, investment or new business initiative, the key thing, there's a couple of kind of key um, deal breakers, right? These are absolutes. If you don't have them, there's no point in going down this path in the first place. First deal breaker is autonomy. If this new disruptive, risky, long-term initiative does not have autonomy away from the core business, no point in even starting down that path. Now, autonomy could mean I have a separate business unit uh, or a separate kind of skunk work operation which um, can go operate on its own little sandbox and I can try and go build this new initiative from scratch. Or obviously you could try and go buy a company. Buying a company is, is another hurdle. But let's just talk about saying that first point. How do I gain consensus in the boardroom, in the C-suite boardroom, to try and get the green light to go and explore and try and validate a new business model? And so the key here is to have the CEO's interest in this new business initiative. If the CEO is not interested, that's the other, that's the second non-starter. Don't bother. Anything that is truly big enough that a large enterprise is going to care about, so it needs to be pretty big in terms of the vision and the scale of, of where it could go and what it could become, uh, is inherently going to probably hurt part of the core business, either by directly commoditizing the existing business model, which I mentioned, or it's certainly going to require resources that would rather be allocated to the core business today. That could be resources both in terms of money and resources certainly in terms of time, which could honestly be more valuable than the money, right? Where are the executives and your team and, and just the teams in general focus going to be in terms of there's only so many hours in the day. So in order for those two things, and you're going to need both of those two things to be allocated to any kind of new business model initiative, you're never going to get those two things unless the CEO is interested in exploring something like this. Um, so if the CEO is not interested in these kinds of, in, in, in this new business model initiative, then there's no point in even trying to get consensus in that C-suite boardroom. Now, how do you get this in front of the CEO? Well, um, if you don't have the ability to go through your boss and then your boss can help set up a meeting with the CEO to see if this is of interest to him or her, uh, then you can try and go outside. So a big focus of Applico is to develop relationships with the C-suite, particularly with CEOs and at the board level, because we won't do any work unless the CEO is involved. We've learned this the hard way, that if the CEO isn't interested in these kinds of things, we're wasting everyone's time. We're wasting our time and your time, frankly. So 
You've got to get to the CEO one way or another, either internally, and you've got that kind of culture where you can get, and I get 30 minutes on the CEO's calendar because me and my boss feel like this is a pretty good new initiative. It's worth ex potentially exploring. Could we try and validate this business model? Okay, let's vet that. Let's do it through the proper channels internally. See if the CEO is interested in that. You don't need to spend any money to get to this point. This is purely a conversation with some good research and framing, also on our side, right? This is a conversation with a subject matter expert that says, we understand platform business models better than anyone else. We understand how to bridge the gap between traditional enterprise and creating new platform businesses. Um, that can actually help a lot when you have a subject matter expert in the room with a CEO versus if there's somewhat of a, a lack of credibility um, or the CEO is a little bit more risk averse. And that's the other thing to think about. So the last thing to think about is, so if you can get the CEO on board, then generally I would say the CEO can set the tone in that C-suite closed door boardroom meeting, right? So you're not all the way solved. And it's good to then go have one-on-one -on -one meetings with key players on the C-suite Certainly key players on the C-suite who you would want resources from uh, or whose business units you would want some kind of involvement from them or input from them uh, during, say, some initial business model validation, right? You definitely want to have one-on-one -on -one meetings after you see that the CEO is on board or you could talk to them in advance if you have a good relationship or they're also a forward-looking forward, forward uh, looking thinker. But the other thing is, what kind of status does the CEO have in the company? Um, is this a new CEO who wants to come and really make a mark and uh, is ready to, you know, is new in the job and wants to green light some new initiatives sooner rather than later? Maybe, you know, not in the first six months, but let's say in the first six to 18 months, really looking to put one or two programs into place that could fundamentally change the course of the business over a three to seven ish year period of time. Is this a CEO who has been there for five plus years, who is also a chairman? So that means they're also on the board, uh, who has a good rapport with the board, right? And ultimately what I'm getting at is there's a CEO in order to green light a new risky business model, exploratory initiative for say a few months time, does the CEO want to run this by his or her board in advance of doing that or not? If yes, then it's a little bit of a different situation in terms of you now need to cater to both boardrooms. If no, well, then you don't need to worry about the second boardroom of the board. That all is going to depend on a case by case basis in terms of basically the relationship that the CEO has with the board. The one caveat I will provide on all of this is that if the business is in dire straits or is underwater and has a lot of fires going on, then you can pretty much throw out any kind of new disruptive risky business model initiative. It just not, it's just not on the table. The business is fighting for self-preservation, not for long-term innovation and disruption. So if this is your job, you might want to look for another job at another company that has its head above water, that has a good stable business. Maybe growth is slowing or stalling, but there's still growth. You still have a profitable business. You see there could be some risk on the horizon. But if you've got a business that is literally in the thick of war, fighting for self-preservation, that thing is more so looking at probably strategic exits or strategic tie-ups in the near term as opposed to truly mid to long-term disruptive innovation. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.